open a horse, where else? Right here at the place to get close to horses. Now he may be short, but don't you dare call him a pony. Look at his wild and rugged as the harsh reality of Iceland's climate says that nature selected only those suited to live there. And even today in modern Iceland, horses are raised in large roaming herds. That's until they're about the age of four or five. And because they are late to mature, training doesn't begin until six or seven. They are ancient, they are powerful, and move in a special way. Now, like most horses, they can walk, trot, any speed. Now, since the horse always has at least one foot in contact with the ground at all times, there's not that unpleasant bouncing you get on a horse who trots. Now, another natural gait unique to this breed is the flying pace. During races in wide open spaces, speeds can reach 30 miles an hour. The traditionally nomadic group, you may call them gypsies, travelers, or Roma, they bred the man to have all the traits their lifestyle demanded. Now they require a unique draft type of horse, a horse that was kind enough to be handled by the kids and didn't require lots of special or extra food and water. And the term banner reminds us of its original working purpose. And that was pulling a beautifully decorated wooden caravan wagon. A banner is lighter than a car or a trap, but large enough to pull substantial loads. Persia. 
The second word, teke, T-E-K-E, -E, well that signifies the original breeders and owners of the Turkmen tribe. Turkmenistan, bordered by Iran, Afghanistan, and the Caspian Sea, is their modern homeland. Tribes first used the Akhotepe for raiding. Horses were their most treasured possession, and the unique qualities of the breed result from unusual management and feeding practices. Now, stallions were wrapped in up to seven layers of felt and kept tied into the tent. The felt provided protection from the cold nights and also kept their coats shiny and their bodies lean. The mares of the fold were never free to wander and forage what they could nearby. Now because grass was always scarce, Akhotepis were fed an unusual diet, slowly bulk but high in protein. A typical meal might include things like mutton fat, barley, eggs, butter, and even the occasional fried dough. And these horses were known throughout the world. Alexander the Great and King Darius of Persia spoke very highly of them. Even emperors from the Han dynasty knew them as Arbamax, a Russian term that means sacred horses. They were willing to sacrifice entire armies to obtain just a few individuals. And today, after thousands of years of careful management, the Akhotepi has developed into a tough lead horse with smooth faces, stamina, tremendous hardiness, and check out that beautiful shimmery metallic coat. And as a riding horse, they're spirited and athletic. They're especially sought after for use in dressage and show jumping. Their phenomenal stamina, of course, makes them the go-to breeding for endurance riding. Listed as a rare breed with only about 6,600 in the world today, their image graces the official seal of their homeland, Turkmenistan. Now that now that was sold in 2003, he's here courtesy of Anne Marie Raj of Manchester, Michigan. That's a great pair of their great friends over the season too. Let's hear it for Sarah and that not leaving a home Beautiful color. Owners and 
readers are dedicated to the Lucasan because they appreciate its rarity, cultural importance, fascinating history, and its traits of intelligence, classical beauty, and harmonious athletic way of moving. Now, Neapolitan on the fourth class side, and by the way, that's a mouthful, that's why we all know him as Beamer. He came to us after a career as a harness horse. This is his first full year under saddle, and we see wonderful things in his future. He's here courtesy of Linda Evans of Morriston, Florida, full in 1999. He's doing a great job. That's his rider, Lauren. They just met a couple days ago, as a matter of fact. Let's hear it for our partners. That's Lauren. Let's hear it. 